Welcome. It's the 31st of March, 2022. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. We've got news and crowd in enterprise. Any other topics that we need to put on the agenda? All right, let's 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 go through those topics then. Thank you. Okay, so first topic, um, we just had uh, Spring for Shell as a remote code execution, zero day vulnerability announced in the worldwide, um, worldwide web in the infrastructure and it's not affecting Jenkins. You can read more about it. Uh, read the blog post on Jenkins.io from the security team and the infra team. Now I've got to insert it here and I have to correct that. And I don't know if the blog post is visible yet, so let's try it. It is. Big victory. Okay, good. So uh, we'll be actively promoting that um, immediately after this meeting. I've got to do some more work to be sure that this is widely known so that people don't panic about, hey, is Jenkins affected by it? Any questions or comments on that one? Okay, next topic then. Crowd in Enterprise for localization. Alex. Yes. So I think, to, I think you wanted to say something to your experience with the platform label up plugin. Yeah. So, well, so I can, there are, there are a couple of awkward spots and this is where Kevin may be able to help. So uh, Mark's attempt to localize some messages failed. And, and that had nothing to do with crowding enterprise and everything to do with insufficient documentation on message extraction. Uh, so for example, one of the messages included an embedded, the messages included an embedded parenthesis. And there's old documentation, wiki docs warn that you can't do that. in a localized message. Now that's an odd, a really surprising limitation, right? Why can't I put a, a parenthesis in? But that was the reality. Uh, so we need to convert the wiki docs to Jenkins www.jenkins.io because they are, the wiki docs are still valid. They at least got me started, but they didn't, I, it took me long enough to find them and I ran out of time and so couldn't, couldn't do my localized messages. However, on the plus side, Mark's attempt to use um, localized HTML, as far as I know, has succeeded. Uh, and its uh, release has been delivered. And I think we can check that. I'll check it separately. I don't need to show a demo here, I think, but check with, with uh, Italian uh, language platform labeler. So for me, I think the next steps for Mark are uh, localize the messages in platform labeler, because I haven't done that yet. They need to be converted to Java properties. Do you mind showing me what you mean by um, need to convert the wiki docs to Jenkins IO? I didn't encounter that warning yet. Ah, yeah. So what, what this is, is let's see, site colon wiki dot Jenkins dot IO uh, localize. Uh, let's see, is it internationalizing? Maybe it's localizing messages. See if I can find it. Is this it? Yes, I think this is the place that has it. 
where it, no, no, this isn't it. Okay, so I'm gonna have to continue looking. Maybe it's here where it tells me that you can't use maybe or, hmm, I'll have to look a little further. Oh yes, here it is. For example, this will not parse, parse correctly. So this was the thing that I eventually found. So it's here, here it's describing how do you deal with messages in jelly files? And what I had was a message in a jelly file that was just explaining and it used parentheses as a way to do a, a casual comment about something. It said, hey, this thing, either this or this, it was just like this. And what this says is you can't put these embedded parentheses inside this percent marked string. It has to be literal, which of course is now going to be complicated for languages that might change the ordering of those because this now has an order dependency. Did I that think, answer your question, Alex? I think I know what you mean. I think it's basically about that crowd and treats the percentage as placeholder or something and that's only, that's only accepted in a specific position. Well, and I'm not even sure that it's cloud in. I think in this case, the problem I was having was nothing to do with cloud, cloud in at all. It was entirely Jenkins. Jenkins, oh, when I tried okay. to develop with this plugin, would simply refuse if I, if I violated this assumption. It would fail to show the message if I tried to use this style of message. So it wasn't anything to do with crowd in at all. It was entirely Jenkins localization. Ah, I think, yeah, no, I know what you mean. And so, so that was that was one of the things that okay I learned by trying to localize localize the platform labeler plugin is there are some messages in Jelly files that you cannot localize without splitting them. Yeah, I personally didn't try to localize Jelly files yet because the majority of files are mostly like in, in Groovy, Java, or Properties, for example. Right. And I think the preferable approach would be to transfer these jelly messages into properties files. I think that is the common approach to translate something. In oh, see, and, and well, okay, so that, that's a good one. Let's, let's discuss that one because I wanna, I wanna talk about that one and get your insights on it. So I'm gonna open up my um, platform labeler location here and let's go find a jelly file. So jelly slash jelly, J. I think, oh yeah, here we go. So here is an example of the, of, yeah, this one, this one certainly has, no, this doesn't have anything localizable in it. How about maybe this one does? Nope. It's, there isn't a lot to translate in platform labeler in case you can't tell. Here we go. Okay, this is, this is I think, the, the one file that actually has strings in it that could be translated. And what it's got is these titles. This title is trying to help the user, title of a checkbox, generate label with Windows feature update, and then it gives examples in the, in the parentheses. And uh, I, yeah. think, I think what you were saying is the best way to do this, or the, the, a common way is, convert this string into a symbolic reference and then put the symbol in a properties file and only yeah. put the symbol here. Yeah, that is what I did yesterday to translate a few, a few strings in the design library plugin for example reasons. And I think that is also the approach many plugin developers take because then you have one unified string in the jelly files and can use these unified strings in the properties file as reference for different languages. Okay, and example, the, title dot one or title dot two would be the same key, the properties file as reference. Okay, and and let's use your your you mentioned design library. Let's use that as a as a good example because that way I can see it and and think about how I would deal with that. Because for me, the the challenge with the the Jenkins design or with the technique was I was not sure I'd understand what the string was supposed to say. So let's go looking here. And if I look for jelly. Now you can just check out my PR I made a few hours ago. Ooh, ooh even better. Yes, right. Okay. 
I think it was a PR. No, no, not this one. The, this we want a closed one. Okay, yeah. so so this provide initial yeah, provide translation yeah, for home. It's that one. Good. Okay. This is the approach I went. I basically exchanged the literal words with placeholders. For example, the, the dollar sign ex and the percentage title is referenced as title in the properties file a bit below. Right. So when I look at this one, when I look down here at title, it will say title is this. Yes. Okay. And this All could right. be the same hierarchy for every other file. For example, if you have an index, unders index underscore DE for German, for example, it would be the same title and then the German translation, for example. And I think this is the approach. The um, There is an article on Jenkins.io how to do that. And this is the approach I took to do that. It's not the article you showed because yours is on wiki.jenkins, but mine is on Jenkins.io. I think it's about how to localize something in Groovy, Jelly, and Java. Good. So maybe it's just that I didn't look in the right place and failed to find, instead found this wiki page that's outdated, and you found the right page on Jenkins.io. So let me go grab that because that that may already be indication, okay, I just didn't do the right thing. So yeah, if you don't mind, I could show it real quick because I still have it open somewhere. Oh, here. that'd be great. Uh, here, I'll just stop sharing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We have it on the screen because it was actually on a core. Do I share the right screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it was actually on a core PR, uh, Daniel commented on mm, not this one. Yeah, I think it was this one. Um, yeah, Daniel showed the link. Uh, nope, this is the wrong one. Uh, uh, I think we got it this one. Contributing MD. Ah, yeah, no, I think I was it. Yeah. <laughs> and this is basically the article on Jenkins. Oh, yeah. oh how to do internet intern and messages in Jelly files. So this is, would be the jelly file, and this would be the string we have translated in the properties file, encoded here. Yeah, and if we go one up, this, this article outlines how to do localization in Java files, in jelly files, and in Groovy files. This, the procedure is always the same. You have the, in Groovy, it's a bit special because you have the actual word here, plugin manager, and copy that reference in the properties file and have it here. In the Java sources, you do the same. Example.description is in the properties file. And in the actual Java code, you utilize the resource bundle holder class and just load the previously defined string from the properties file. And in the jelly file, like we talked a bit, a bit ago about it, we use the message reference with the percentage from the properties file. So basically, everything boils down to the dot properties file. If you want to do localization, I think your platform label a plugin just does it in the old-fashioned way. I don't know, but this is what is recommended, I guess. Well, and and the properties file is what I was trying to create. The mistake I made was instead of, was trying to use the literal string as the key. And yeah, what, what this shows is don't use the little string as the key, use something symbolic that is easier, re easier to represent as a Java property. Yeah, for example, the only Good. case where you, I mean, you can use the full word, but you would need to phrase it as string, for example, but you can also use a shorthand like message and then message equals and the actual message. Right. The only case where you use the full word would be in Groovy, that you use plugin manager and the inverted slash as delimiter, then plugin manager and the Groovy would load it like this then. But in Jelly, you don't do that. Well, but, and even in Groovy, isn't there a way, so that that title colon underscore, that's a that's a call to get text. So that's, yes. that's just a call to a function. Couldn't I even there embed double quotes message 
and it would symbolically look up message in the file and present the, the English text, right? Uh, my knowledge with the localization Groovy is bar minimal. I didn't try that yet. Well, and, and I will, I have, unfortunately, the Git plugin has, uses <laughs> Groovy for some of its views, and I've not yet converted it from Groovy to Jelly, and therefore, I will have to test this. So already what you're showing is, is very good. Yeah, and I think if you convert the, I think the one jelly file in, the, in your platform labeler plugin to this example, it would work out well as well. Excellent, thank you. I will, I will make that attempt. It may not be today, today's a little busy, but, but thank you very much, Alex. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, no problem. So I think my next step then is to do, I'm gonna switch my, or gonna localize some additional plugins as well so that, so that I have more samples to test. I'm not yet ready to do the Git plugin and the Git client plugin. They're, that's a little too heavyweight, but I've got several other plugins that I maintain that I can use as test cases. And, and so I assume Alex, you're still willing to do German language translation for me for one or more of those, if I'll just tell you which ones they are. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Excellent. All right, thank you. Anything else we need to discuss on the crowd in translation? And I'll share my screen and we can go back because we've got Elizabeth here with us as well. And she may want to have some time to discuss. Let's see, can you see my, my screen showing the internationalizing? And yes. now Doc's office hours, good, okay. All right, so Elizabeth, welcome. Did you want to talk to us about She Code Africa? Contribute on. Hi, Mark. Good Hi. evening, everyone. Good All right, so um, for this, right, um, Zainab is the programs manager, but um, current, currently um, applications have gone out for this currently and we're still taking in um, applicants and um, applications will be closing very soon because we'll kick off the program, I think next month, yes, next month. So and by next month, meaning in April? Yes, April. Excellent. Okay, great. Um, in, in case, Alex, you're not familiar with it, She Code Africa Contributhon is a, this year it will be a six-week six week effort where we invite mentors from the Jenkins Project to combine with new open source contributors from Africa. Last year, we mentored five contributors from Nigeria, Rwanda, I forget one or two other countries, and, and had a great experience with them. We've proposed a program. We're certainly looking for more mentors, and we're going to run it again this year in April and May. Yeah, that, that sounds interesting. I think we spoke about it a few weeks ago already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Elizabeth, anything else that you need to share with us or anything else that you need to note to us? I'm, I'm hoping that Jenkins will be selected. We have some mentors ready, yeah, but sure. we'll look for your um, announcement. Yeah, we've actually announced to Mark. We um, announced last night. Oh, good. We announced already. We have um, Jenkins, we have DPA, we have Cloud, we have um, various companies um, and various organizations that um, are partnering with us this time around, about six of them. We announced last night. Excellent. Okay, so I, sh I should be able to find that on the She Code Africa site? Yes. Okay, oops, She Code Africa. There we go. So programs, events. School Contributhon. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm not seeing announcement, but that's that's great. This is the place we should be looking. We've announced it um, across all our social media handles. We did that last night. Oh, good. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. 
any other topics we need to discuss today. Alex, any any hot topics from you or Kevin? Okay. I know that um, I attended this meeting like th three weeks back and we had um, a conversation. You said you um, asked me to give you two weeks about the 319 girls that are training in various technical skills. Let me bring that back. Thank you for the reminder. So let's, this is... Oh, here we go. Right. This one was the one. Your boot camp, right? Let's, yes. Okay. So let's let's bring that is ending next info week. forward. And okay. So, so the question was your front end development boot, boot camp. And okay. So it is now, you say ending next week. Yes, next week is the last week. Okay, good. All right. And looking for internships. Ah, oh, right. This is what you were looking for was internships in the projects. Yeah. Okay. And I, so I, I think I had the action item to see if we could find a way to fund women. And I have not found that. So my apologies. Let me put it on my list again. So. So, and I assume in terms of issuing payments to the women, that would have to come from the funding project, right? It would not, it's not that She Code Africa administers the payments. So Elizabeth, you're still muted. Yeah, um, at some point, I my network went out. So so sorry. Uh, so I didn't get what you said. So so the challenge here is that in order to pay the interns, the payments this because the boot camp you're running is not a Shikot Africa boot camp, the payments would have to come directly from the project to those individuals, not through she code africa so it's not that a company could donate to she code africa and then you would pay them we would have to find a way to pay them directly all right but um there is there is um actually a registered um organization that is running the boots camp empower her community oh th there is okay yes and empower her community and um, there is a website. Let me let me drop the website link in the comment section so you could just go through it. I've dropped the website. Okay, so I have it as empowerher.community dot community yes All right so let's go there okay and so this community all right so let me do some reading while we're here then okay so bootcamp 1.0 Okay, and okay, so, but as far, as far as I can tell, I don't see anything here that indicates that the Empower community has a facility to pay any of these who would be working as interns. Do I understand that correctly? Okay. When um, you say, facility do you mean um a payment link right do you have a way so so let's i think what what you were suggesting is interns might might join the jenkins project for instance and contribute their work but they would need to be paid and in order to be paid we have to have some way to get the money transferred to them 
And yes, I was and assuming oh, does does empower.community have the ability to do that kind of transfer or would we have yes, to have Oh you do. We do. Yes, we do. Okay, all right. Well, so then so then if Okay, so what I think you're saying then is if an organization donates to or pays empower.community then empower.community could pay the intern is that is that a correct way of saying it yeah i guess so the the reason i ask is i'm most organizations are not configured to make payments into africa at least i know my company is not 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 set up to make payments to individuals in Africa, yeah, whereas okay. they could probably we've we've have figured out how to donate to SheCode Africa, and so we might be able to use the same technique to donate to Empower Her Community. All right. Okay, so so Elizabeth, who should I contact for further? Should I just use the contact us for further discussions? Um, yes, um, our meal is there, and you could as well contact me to go for that discussion. Actually, Mark, can you hear me, Mark? I can, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so um, actually, I am the founder of this community. Okay. I'm the founder of this community, yes. Okay, so so you have you have a way that if a company donated or the Jenkins project donated funds, you have a way to transfer those funds to the to the intern that would be doing the doing the effort. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, so then uh, Mark to check with Jenkins project and other donors for donation to sponsor an intern. One or more interns. Good, okay, thanks. All right, thank you. Excellent. Any other topics we should discuss here today? Okay, let me let me can let's continue the this we'll, we'll talk to it again in for the discussion next week. Thanks Elizabeth. Alex, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Nope, oh, thank you. All right. All right. Recording should be available in about 24 hours. I hope.